So this is a genuine uh, Enigma cipher machine from the Second World War. And uh, I'm going to briefly explain to you how it works, how you encode a message, um, and how you decode a message. So um, first of all, uh, you can see here there's a keypad of 26 letters, um, and then a lamp board up here. So when you type a letter, a lamp lights up. So if I type the letter P, the P is encrypted here as a Y. Um, now, if I type P again, an N lights up. So I'm giving the same input, but I'm getting out a sort of random output. And that's the encryption. So why is that happening? Well, we can look inside the machine. Um, what happens is that 26 wires go from the keyboard um, up the side of the machine and into these um, three rotors. Let me take them out and then you'll see that they really are rotors on an axle. Um, there's the axle, there's one of the rotors, and here are 26 inputs. So when I type the letter A, for example, I know that A always goes in at the top, the top contact. But inside of here, uh, between the input and the output, the wiring is like spaghetti. So I type in at the top as an A, but it might come out as the side as an E. It goes in here as an E, it might come out as a V. It goes in here as a V, it might come out as a K. So it's a scrambled spaghetti wiring inside this rotor that causes P to be changed into a different letter. And on top of that, every time I type a letter, this rotor moves one notch. Type another letter, it moves one notch. So now, not only is the spaghetti scrambling the, the letter, but the spaghetti is changing each time. Um, so it's the dynamic motion of these rotors that leads to the whole encryption. Now, let me pop that in here. There is another element I should tell you about quickly. This is the, the plug board at the front of the Enigma. What this allows me to do is to swap pairs of letters. So if I, type, if I, if I swap, say, A with D, every time I type A, it follows the path of D. And every time I type D, it follows the path of A. So depending how I, I plug these plugs in, I get a different encryption. So let's imagine I'm ready to send a message. Let's imagine I've plugged this up already. Um, let's imagine I'm gonna rotate these wheels in, a, in an odd direction, uh, a random direction. I'm now ready to send my message. I'll close the lid and I'm gonna send the message OK. Um, so I type the letter O, O gives me a R. I type the letter K and K gives me a Z. So OK was encrypted as RZ, okay? Now, if you receive RZ, um, to decode the RZ, you need to have a machine, of course, but you also need to have the machine set up in the identical way. These plugs all have to be plugged in the right way. The rotors all have to have the right orientations. Now, I can get the same setup um, by just moving this rotor back two notches. This rotor has moved forward two notches, so I need to move it back one, two notches. Now, I have an identical machine. OK became RZ, so now if I type in RZ, I'll hope to get O and K. R gives me a O, and Z gives me a K. So encryption and decryption is really simple if you know the settings of the machine. If you don't know the settings of the machine, then there are hundreds and hundreds and millions and millions of possible settings to try and check. And that was the challenge that faced the code breakers at Bletchley Park. Um, how they found the right settings and how they decoded the Enigma is another story.